coming up. Durian Rider and Don Montes. It's the Livin' La Vida Low Carb Show with Jimmy Moore. And now, here's Jimmy. Hey, and welcome back to the Livin' La Vida Low Carb Show with Jimmy Moore, episode 491. Welcome back to the Livin' La Vida Low Carb Show with Jimmy Moore. And today, guys, I have been trying to get this guy for a long time. He is here today. You know him as Durian Rider. A lot of people know about his website, 30bananasaday.com. He is a very well-known uh, high-carb, raw, vegan diet advocate. And I wanted to just chat with him because a lot of you have said, hey, have you heard about this Durian Rider? I'm like, yeah, I, I know who he is and I know the work he does. Um, and I thought it would be kind of a good idea just to kind of talk to him and see what his diet philosophy is all about and why he believes what he believes. So, Durian Rider, Rider welcome to the show. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks for having me on, man. Well, tell us a little more about yourself. For those people who don't know who you are, and, and this audience, I can't imagine it's very many, but t tell us a little more about who you are and how you became this, uh, this persona online known as Durian Rider. Yeah. Basically, I had a lot of health issues as a child. I was always a sick kid, the kid who couldn't do sport because he'd be too sick. I'd have asthma, I had Crohn's disease. When I got old, when I got teenager, I became a lot of acne. So I always struggled with my energy levels. And then when I became a teenager, they sort of magnified. And then I moved out of home, started making my own food, started just thinking maybe what I'm eating could affect my health. Mm -hmm. And then I got into more sport. I never had a driver's license, so I started riding my bike everywhere. And then I started meeting cyclists, and they started to go, well, maybe you need to eat more of this and less of that. And I got into bike racing. But then I sort of would always go back to uh, you know, high-fat foods or junk foods, and then I'd, you know, eventually I got chronic fatigue really bad. So I had to go even one step more and really you know, you look at what I'm eating, what, what fuel I'm putting in my tank. And that's sort of led me to where I am now. I've been vegan for 10 years. I'm a high-carb advocate. Mm -hmm. eat a lot of bananas. And that's, that's where I'm at today, yeah. Well, tell, give us a day in the life of your diet. I think that'll be curious for people to hear. Day in life. So what, today, it's a good example. I woke up, had about 20 of those uh, large Californian organic medjool dates. They're really good. Just 20 of those. Mm -hmm. them, chuck them in the Vitamix blender and then a bit of cinnamon powder in there and maybe a quart and a half, two quarts of water. Blend that up and just drank that for breakfast. Went for a... Uh, an easy one hour jog. Are we on video now? Is this, is this, is this audio? This, this is an audio interview. Okay, that's cool because the cat's jumping around. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. And, uh, and then I went for an easy hour jog with my partner just in the Van Cortland Park here in, in New York. Mm -hmm. just, just easy. And, uh, and then tonight, this afternoon, I had lunch. I had about, uh, about four pounds of grapes, organic grapes at Whole Foods. And then tonight, I'll have probably about 15 bananas followed by a a one pound, two pound salad. So, do you make uh, a lot of smoothies? Is that what I heard you say you did with the dates? Yeah, yeah. Well, we call it data raid. Data raid. <laughs> yeah. We call it data raid because you know better than data raid all the yeah. colors and stuff like that. I got you. Yeah, the data raid is good because it's got a lot of vitamins, a lot of nutrients, and it tastes great and it's really easy to make. You don't need a Vitamix because they're pretty expensive blenders. Sure. But you can get like a twenty dollar blender from Costco. But the Vitamix just makes it even smoother. Sure. So yeah, smoothies are good because if you're like working in an office setting, you can just have a big gallon glass bottle or half gallon bottle and just sort of have it under your desk and just sip it while you're working. So, you, you know, you can make that in the morning and it takes five minutes to make, take it to work, you're good to go. And you get, you know, you can put three, three four thousand calories in a, a half gallon uh, jug and just shake it, sip it when you're ready. Now, we're going to qualify those calories that you uh, consume because you're a, a pretty high-level athlete with all your bicycling. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a high level and I'm, I'm really fit, but my training isn't, my volume isn't very high level. Like, I've, someone asked me the other day, I said, Harley, I don't believe you. I want to know exactly how many kilometers you ride and run per day. So, it's okay. So, kilometer-wise, I'm doing about 40 kilometers a day on average, which is about, what's that, 25 miles, 24 miles. Mm-hmm. I'm averaging about 1.7 miles jogging a day, so it's that's probably about 70 minutes a day, which is, I mean, I've, I've caught the subway today for about two hours, right. so it's, you know, I spend more time on the subway than I do exercising, and uh, and if I have to miss, miss a day of exercise, it's no problem, you know, it's not a, I must exercise every day, but 
I walk upstairs every day. I, you know, I end up doing something every day on average. Well, some would say 70 minutes of exercise a day, 25 miles of riding a bike is pretty, yeah. pr- pretty abnormal. That's that's pretty on the high end, uh, yeah. the high percentile um, as yeah. far as as exercise goes. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah, I, I can understand that. But if if I uh, as a, I've been a personal trainer for the last since 1999, so almost 12 years now. Mm-hmm. And that, that's a volume of training. I could get anybody and put it on, and, and they could do that. You know, I could maybe put them on three quarters of that volume of training. I could put them maybe, you know, 40 minutes a day of easy cardio. Mm-hmm. You know, and if they're really, really, really sedentary and really never exercise, I could put them on. I could start them on 10 minutes a day of cardio and just build it up over the years. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, four or five years' time, they'll be, you know, super fit. So, um, without really going crazy on the exercise. So how important is cardio compared to, say, weightlifting? Well, I think they're both very important, depending on what sport you're doing. I mean, I, I do cycling and running, so it's all about being lightweight. Right. That's why I eat a lot of carbs is to stay light. Uh, but if you're doing bodybuilding, then you, you're going to need to cut the cardio back because the cardio just, just shreds it. You know, you get too light. That's why you don't see sumo wrestlers running marathons <laughs> um, or doing bike races. Or well, you don't see bodybuilders doing marathons or bodybuilders doing bike races. Um, so cardio is better if you want to be leaner. And if you want to be bigger, like stronger, then obviously it's about doing powerlifting, heavy weights, things like that. And I've got a few vegan bodybuilder friends of mine. Yeah. And they, they eat pretty similar, but they, don't, they won't go training with me on the bike because it's, it's very – it's a catabolic. You, in, in a sport, we have catabolic and anabolic. Anabolic means building and catabolic means debuilding, <laughs> the right, strategy. Right. Sort of thing. So, cardio exercise very uh, catabolic to the uh, the body. It just sort of strips you down. That's why you watch a marathon, and the first hundred people are very slim, and then you might see a few struggles at the end, a bit bigger. Yeah. If those struggles stick at it long enough, then they'll be just you know they look like a marathoner. So yeah. it's yeah. Now you made a statement just a moment ago, and I know you kind of snuck it in on me, and I'm I'm going to come back to it here. <laughs> that you eat a lot of carbs to stay light, but yeah. I, I'm sure even you will uh, acknowledge that there are some people who, when they eat a lot of carbs, they actually gain weight. Why do you think this happens? Yeah, I mean, because their definition of carbs is donuts or pastry or meat lovers pizza or cheese and chips and deep fried carbohydrate foods. My definition of, definition of carbs this is a good question, Jimmy. My definition of carbs is like fruits and vegetables and, say, whole grains, the rice, even though I'm not a rice eater myself. I do promote rice. I just prefer fruit because I find fruit works better for my digestion, having a history of Crohn's disease. So I'm a big fruit eater. But, uh, I mean, I've, I've got friends and they say, oh, but carbs make me fat. And I'm like, okay, let's go back to your house. Or we're at, maybe we're at their house. And I said, let's open the, let's open the fridge. And uh, I said, you show me what carbohydrate foods you think are making you fat. And they pull out the chocolate. They pull out the donuts. They pull out their ice cream. They pull out the end of meat lovers pizza. And I'll say, well, do you realize these carbohydrate foods are 50% calories coming from fat? And they're like, oh, I didn't know that. And I'm like, yeah. And I said, well, how about you have a vegetarian cheese-free pizza? They're like, oh, that would taste disgusting. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. That's why you don't eat it because if you did eat vegetarian cheeseless pizza, you, you wouldn't be as big as you are. And once you give them a, you know, a vegan pizza, they're like, wow, this is pretty good. Or you, once you give them some good fruit or a good fruit smoothie, they're like, wow, this is pretty good. So low fat can actually be tasty. And it's sort of it's a paradigm shift. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, I mean, a lot of people, it's hard to ha- handle but I've never ever seen someone get big or maintain a big weight on fruits or steamed rice and vegetables. I mean, you go to like a, a fast food chain and, you know, like everyone says, oh, I love my meat. And I'm like, yeah, I can tell you love your meat, you know, and that's why you've got you where you're at. And so I've never seen, I mean, this, what's the stereotype of a vegan? Someone who eats rice, lentils, fruits, vegetables, and they're really skinny. Well, and there are plenty of skinny people that eat the opposite of raw vegan. Um, Definitely. And, and so well, why do you think that there are differences uh, in people who do your version of eating versus uh, more of a paleo, low-carb type of eating? Well, why are there success stories on both sides? Um, I, I don't know any success stories on the other side. Like in, you know, in the athlete world, I'm talking anyway. So right. I, see, I see some athletes, they try and do the, the low-carb thing, and they, they, they bonk. Like the, the word for bonking in sports is when you run out of glycogen. Right. 
So in cycling, it's called bonking. In running, it's called hitting the wall. And it's when you go into ketosis and you just got no energy. Your legs turn to jelly. You get all confused in your head. You get depressed. So I've never seen any success stories on paleo athletes. Well, um, perhaps in the short term you bonk, but when, once you become keto adapted, yeah, then you don't have that issue. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that. And uh, I've, I've never seen it, you know. I've heard that theory definitely. I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, 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 I put it out there a few times for any paleo athlete to come train with us and mm-hmm. and, and show me how it works. But I've, no one's ever taken me up on the offer. And I, I'm not not to be cheeky or real. I'm, I'm genuinely like interested. I, I love to see see someone do this because it's I'm purely curious because I love you know I love learning about how the body works and things like that. Mm-hmm. I've just never seen. Even Mark Sisson, he says that you know if you want to do cardio on this lifestyle. Of the, of the, on his low carb lifestyle, he says it's just not possible. You can't maintain it. And he says if you want to do cardio, you have to get back on the carbs. Well, Mark Sisson, you know, he's a pretty clued up guy, and if, if he says that, then you know. I well, don't know. And, and Mark, I respect his work, but he's certainly not a researcher. There are researchers out there, people like Dr. Stephen Finney, who's been on this show before, uh, who's actually done research. Uh, you know, looking at this whole keto adaptation thing specifically for athletes. Uh, him and Jeff Folick at UConn, I mean, there are certainly people out there that are that are looking at this very closely and showing that, yes, it is indeed possible. I, I bet you'll have some people that will contact you after this interview. <laughs> yeah. I, Might take I you up so. on that. Yeah. My, my email is a vegan bobster. That's V-E-G-A-N, B-O-B-S-T-E-R at gmail.com. And anyone's welcome to email me anytime. That's my private email and I'll put it out there. Well, I certainly highly recommend that people do contact you. Yeah. And, 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 Harley, I got to tell you, you're not as much of a prick <laughs> as you seem to be, and I mean that with all due respect. Uh, yeah, as you seem cool. to be on your videos and and in the the vitriol that you sometimes put on your blog, um, a lot of people are turned off by that. And I know you've told me, you know, that's kind of a shtick. You're trying to get people interested in what you're having to say, and there's oh, nothing yeah. more boring than it being just boring. You want it to be controversial just for controversial sake. So is there any pretense to what you're doing or is this just a, a shtick that you're just, you feel like works for you? What, what does pretense mean? I'm well, just basically, you know, do you really believe everything that you're saying and the tone that you're saying it in? I think that kind of turns some people off that you would otherwise perhaps, you know, have listened to your point of view. Like today, you're being very reasonable people yeah. will be able to hear you in a calm, clear manner, yeah. but they don't always get that when they watch you on your YouTube videos or read your blog post uh, yeah. about people that are on paleo low carb. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, like, you know, when I'm one-on-one with people, I, this is who I really am, but when it comes to YouTube or my blog, I like put it out there and yeah, people ask me the question. It's sort of, when you're having a monologue like a YouTuber or a blog, I find it's good to have a bit of controversy, ask some questions, you know, put it out there, and because uh, there's people out there blogging, and if you want to have your thing stand out, you got to, in my opinion, you know, be entertaining. Because we're in this world of click, 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 click. Next channel, boring, whatever. And if you can create a bit of controversy, ruffle a few feathers without you know, making anything up, and share your opinions, share your experiences, and yeah, that's that's my style. But can't you do that without going to personal attacks against yeah. specific people? I mean, I've kind of seen that, and you've even come after me a little bit, <laughs> and that's fine. I don't, I can, I'm a big boy, I can handle it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just think that that's kind of tacky when you have a point of view. Why not just present your point of view and let people decide for themselves whether they think that that you're full of BS or whether you yeah, have yeah. the next greatest weight loss or or health thing for them. Definitely. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've thought about doing that and what I've, but I feel like a hypocrite because I'm, I'm wanting to say this and I'm wanting to say that, but then I've, I've done the blogs and the YouTube videos where I'm all sort of, you know, I don't say anything and I feel like I'm lying to people. Yeah. I mean, if you ask me questions now, I'll, I'll turn it on or what I'll tell the truth. Mm-hmm. With the blogs, I, I just like to tell people information that I would have liked to have heard when I first started my journey in health. And people ask me questions to say, what about, you know, such and such? What about this? What about that? Why doesn't this work? Can you give me any real examples rather than just making up hypotheses? And so I'll say, yeah, well, look at this person. This person wrote this book and they're taking human growth hormone or they're taking testosterone and they say that if you eat bacon eggs for breakfast, you'll look like them. But they don't really divulge too much. They're on human growth hormone, et cetera. So I'll, I'll you know, I'll share information with people and let them decide ultimately. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's even something that, that I talk about quite a bit 
partly yep, yep. is, you know, find the plan that'll work for you. And if that's uh, 30 bananas a day, then then go for it. Yeah. If, if that can uh, not impact your health in any way negatively, then why not? Yep. But yeah. for a lot of people, a 100% raw vegan diet, which is what I, I think I hear you saying your diet is, um, yep. it is not at all ideal. Yeah, man. They could just go vegan, you know, that, that's really easy to do. Been in this scene a long time now, and I like to learn from other people's mistakes. And I've got a, a bit of a forensic mindset. You know, w when I was in high school, I wanted to be a forensic scientist, and I didn't, you know, I didn't get the grades. So I just sort of started working in the bike industry. And, and I always like to look at the details. You know, I'm really, I mean, you could call me obsessive compulsive when it comes to details. I don't like taking anything to chance. I like to really have certainty. And when it comes to my health, I, I was sort of big, you know, what's the word, uh, crazy when it comes to my health. I really wanted to work out what actually works and why does something work, why does that not work. And I would took the time out to really analyze things. And, and I'm not afraid to ask people questions. I learned that from my mother. She's always the sort of person who can stop anyone on the street and, and just ask me a question. And I, as right. a teenager, I was like, that's embarrassing, Mom. You shouldn't do that. But now I realize if you want to learn, you can't be afraid to ask questions. Right. And if someone's – yeah, most people answer your questions if you ask them in a nice way. Right. They're always, they're always flattered. Well, and that's why you're on this show today because I wanted to honestly hear from you and, and what you believe, what your worldview is regarding nutrition. And uh, I, I think it I think it illuminates our, our understanding even more. E even when we don't necessarily agree with who we're hearing, I think it, at the very least we get to see why you believe what you believe in your heart of hearts. Mm-hmm. And I, th I think that, you know, what you believe is what you believe and nobody's yeah. going to change that. And nobody's even trying to change that necessarily. It's just let's hear your point of view and, and then someone can make the decision. Yes, that works for me. No, that yep. doesn't work for me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always say to people, you know, unless you personally experience something, you don't, you don't really know. You know, it's everything else but your personal experience is just programming. Got my bike to the subway today, got on the train and got 20 pounds of bananas. And I'm looking at all the adverts on the subway, on the way to the subway, or I'm walking past, you know, you got to eat chicken, you got to eat beef, you got to have a you know, Sunday or something like that. And it's, the you know, society's always telling you what to do all the time in regards to advertising. Or the, I wear a singlet all the time that says go vegan. And a girl got, got on the train and just said, oh, I tried vegan for a week. I said, that's, oh, that's a good start. And then I said, you know, so, what, what was your goal to go vegan? She says, I, I wanted the detox. You know, I wanted to lose some weight. And I said, yeah, well, that's, that's why most people go vegan, man, because they want to lose the weight. Yeah. And it's easy to do when you're a vegan. And, and she said, oh, I got, I got stressed and, you know, I started eating chicken and stuff. I said, well, you, you're just hungry, you know. just You should have eaten some more plant foods and uh, you, you'd be on the go. And I told her about the book called Skinny Bitch yeah. and the book called Skinny Bass. You heard of those books? Of course. Yeah, yeah. And so I said, you know, check it out. You get one for on Amazon for probably 15 bucks. And she said, I'll check it out. And, uh, yeah, I like just giving people information, planting seeds, and they can they can go from there. So your argument for why people fail on a vegan diet is they're not eating enough calories? Definitely. If, if you put enough fuel in the tank, you're good. If you don't, your body gets hungry. Like in the 1960s, we had the world's biggest ever famine in China. Mm -hmm. And not many people know, but the history records prove it. It's on the internet. Just Google up China famine, 1960s. So what happened is China, they had a bit of a government thing going on there where they wanted to become a big uh, mega economy. So they started exporting their grains to the US and the EU and Australia for our livestock industries. So that's when the 60s is when the fast food and all the beef consumption just went through the roof. And uh, so what that is, they starved the Chinese people so they can make money and then the peasants and the farmers and stuff were running out of food. So what they had is they had a law where you could swap your children and eat them. So if you're hungry enough, humans become an item on the menu. You know, so that's – so it's basically it's like in Le Le uh, World War Two in Poland in Leningrad where they had the Nazis come in and, and sort of square off the city and say, okay, this is, this is how it is now. This is the rations. They had access to the zoo animals. So first they, they ate the ox and then they ate the zebras and then the giraffes and then the hippos and then the tigers and then the, the monkeys and everything got eaten in the zoo. And then eventually people's pets got eaten. They ate the cats, they ate the dogs, they ate the rats and the, you know, the, the, the parrots and things like that. And then they started scraping off the starch of the 
wallpaper paste because back then it was used, you know, just used starch for wallpaper paste. So they started scratching off all the starches on the walls and cooking it up and adding a bit of salt and having, you know, potato wallpaper starch soup. And then the the famine just continued on and you know, children started going missing, cadavers on the street started missing body parts, and then it became a sort of a unofficial law that you couldn't sell minced meat in that uh, Leningrad sort of area. Because if it was minced meat, then it could have been someone's, yeah, you know, someone's child or someone's leg or something like that. Right. And then there's a story where one lady committed suicide. She jumped off the off the building and landed on a uh, a cooking pot of soup, and all of her, uh, you know, people just started eating all the brains and stuff that was splattered on the ground, just because I was so hungry. And and think if you're a vegan and you get hungry, you drop your standards. If you're on any sort of diet, like I've I've got friends who are not vegan. But they refuse to eat, you know, Big Macs or McDonald's. But when they get hungry enough, they'll eat a Big Mac out at 3 a.m. after a night of nightclubbing because they're hungry. And when you're hungry, your standards drops. It's uh, I like to have quality fruit, but when I'm hungry, I'll eat fruit that doesn't taste as good as the quality just because I'm hungry. Right. So I, I tell people always it's better to eat more than under eat and then end up eating the real junk stuff that cause you the problems in the first place. And when it comes to carbohydrates, I mean, you know, it's been my experience and experience of many others that a high carb, low fat, plant based, vegan, ideally raw vegan lifestyle is the way to go. And failing that, you know, a high raw, high carb, low fat, vegan lifestyle is excellent. You know, fruit for breakfast, fruit for lunch, rice and beans, you know, bean burritos, rice cakes, or low fat nut, vegan nachos and stuff like that for dinner is fantastic. You know, risottos, oil-free pasta dishes, gluten-free pasta, oil-free vegan dishes are fantastic. You know, fruit's always going to be the best because it's got so much nutrients per calorie. And fruit is so slimming. I mean, the the biggest issue with fruit, sweet, sugary fruit like bananas, dates, watermelons, grapes, is you can get almost too skinny. And a lot of people aren't comfortable being too skinny. I mean, I'm comfortable because I'm a marathon runner, I'm a cyclist. You know, it's good to be skinny as a cyclist because you go fast up the hills. And you don't have to train as much to keep the, to keep the weight down because um, you're eating fruit. It just sort of dissolves your body fat stores. I don't know how it does that, but it does. And uh, a lot of people don't like being so skinny. That's why a lot of chicks go to, to, to fruit because they want to get skinny. <laughs> a lot of guys don't like the fruit because they, they get it so lean on the fruit. They feel, I think, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a bit thin here and uh, I'm not used to this. But being a road cyclist, I mean, you look at Lance Armstrong or the Schleck brothers, all these people – Cadell Evans, when they're you know, fit, they're very slim. And as a road cyclist, you're used to being slim. You're used to people telling you, oh, you need to put on some weight. You know, And so when you get into raw foods, into fruit, you get very slim. And the women like it, and the guys feel a bit self-conscious if they're not already used to it or if they're not into running or cycling. Now, hearing you talk about this diet, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking through the prism of somebody who goes to a 9-to-5 office job, and yep, they're yep. sitting down yep. at a desk for hours a day, pretty much yep. a sedentary lifestyle. That's me. Yep. It, it, oh, that's you. All right, man, I, I spend so much time on the computer. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, but you, you said earlier that you spend 70 minutes a day cycling 25 miles. Yeah, that's – I wouldn't say that's sedentary. But then the, then, then so I get, I, get, I get about 12 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours sleep a night. So, that, okay, so I've got half the day sleeping, yeah. and then I've got – so then I've got 10, 12 hours to play with. So I've got about 70 minutes of that. Or let's, let's say two hours. Let's be generous here. Let's say I exercise two hours a day, and then I've got eight to 10 hours. And that eight to 10 hours, that, that's internet. That's working in my little office on my laptop, yeah. you know, just answering hundreds of emails a day, running our forum, which is like the largest raw foods forum on the planet, and that, that just chews up the hours. But I right. love it, so it doesn't matter. Doing YouTube videos, just questions after questions after questions. But and I'm, I'm happy to do that. That's so I'm very more serious. exercise than the average person in the whole world gets a day. I, I yeah. mean, even you will admit that. I mean, unless I'm living in China or India where I'm working in the fields or, you know, pushing carts around. Right. Yeah. So that exercise more than me. So uh, I guess my question is, do you yep. feel like that this diet, if somebody didn't do any exercise, which is a great majority of the population here in America, yep. Yep. Uh, is this going to work for them? Because it seems that you need, especially with the amount of, of, I mean, 30 bananas a day. I know that's kind of a shtick, but you literally mean oh, you know, yeah. that quantity of, of food. That can be just my breakfast, 30 bananas, if I've got a you know, ravenous appetite. 
I never limit. I never ever limit my carbohydrate intake. I limit my fat intake definitely, but I never limit my carbohydrate intake. So I'll eat up to seventy bananas in a day. I'm sure I could do a hundred if I if I if someone put the challenge out there to me. So and if I had a if I had a hundred ripe bananas there. How often are you eating? Is it every couple of hours, or do you eat a meal in the morning and then go six seven hours and then eat again? Or sometimes I just eat twice a day. Sometimes five times a day. Typically, it's about twice to three times a day. Just depends on your hunger. Yeah. If I'm hungry, I eat. I never, ever, ever restrict my calories. Yeah, well, actually, I lie. But the only time I restrict my calories is if, say, um, I've got a a running race. Normally, I do a running race once a week, like a 5K. So it takes me about 17 minutes. So I race 17 minutes a week, average. So if I've got a 5K running race, I don't eat beforehand, you know, because if you're doing a running race, you want to have a light stomach. So I restrict my calories then. But then I make up for it in an hour later after the running race. How many calories a day do you think you average? About three and a half thousand as a minimum, mm-hmm. anywhere up to, anywhere up to seven thousand, eight thousand. And I'm six foot tall, hundred and forty five pounds. So my body mass in, index is around sits around you know nineteen when I'm really lean and up to twenty one in the off season. Mm. So and I, I eat as much as I want every day, and I, I never force myself to exercise. But I I end up exercising a bit just because I want to go get some more fruit. <laughs> so I got to get on the bike. Get on the subway, carry the 20 pounds of bananas back home. So you exercise so you can eat more? I exercise to eat more. Yeah, like I, if I want to go get food, I have to move my body. Like I don't, I don't have a driver's license. So I sort of like, you know, I can sit home and starve or I can get up and go down to Whole Foods and get a 20-pound bag of bananas or, you know, box of dates, things like that. But I don't exercise like thinking, oh, well, if I exercise, I can eat. It's like, no, 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 it's like, I just exercise because that's my part of my transport. Like I might, you know, I have to go back to the post office tonight, so I have to walk down to the post office and send a package down and walk back. So that's you know, ten minute walk. Um, might even take the cat. So, like Gary Tobb says, you're working up an appetite. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think it's healthy to move the body. I mean, I, I couldn't. I'm not sure. Maybe, I, maybe, maybe I could live on Amazon. I don't know if Amazon, Amazon deliver home bananas, but. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to look into that. I'm, I don't eat bananas, so I, I don't know yeah. if they deliver them or not. <laughs> yeah, let, let's okay. Let's just put it out. There. Let's say that um, I think Gary Torb says cardio makes you fat, which I, don't, I can't understand that one because if that was the case, I'd be obese. And he's, well, Gary I, says carbs make you fat, and if that was the case, I'd be obese. Well, I, I I think one of the things that Gary's putting out there, and I, and why I think a lot of people that listen to this show respect him so much is. Uh, you know, all the things that you talk about, about your diet, pretty much are for people that are healthy. I think once you get to the point where you've been so damaged because we ate crappy, and I was one of those people, uh, Harley, yep. I ate terrible for the first three decades of my life because that was kind of the culture I grew up in. And yeah. so maybe some people get to the point where maybe they could have eaten 30 bananas a day and gotten away with it. But now they become so metabolically deranged, metabolically broken, whatever you want to, however you want to call it, that now they have to rein in those foods that could cause them problems, and fruit could be one of them. I mean, that's a theory, but I've never seen it. But what I have seen is I've seen people with terminal cancer come onto this fruit and vegetable monkey diet and reverse their cancer, and now they're running marathons. What about, mango- what about fruit juice? Do you consume that? Yeah, I'll, I'll, if I'm out training and I'll, I'll drink some bottled fruit juice, I just I always grab the one that has no preservatives or flavors because that means means they use really crap fruit. So I'll go for the natural sort of organic fruit juice. Right. I, I do prefer fresh, definitely, and that's why I carry dates with me because dates are high sugar, high calorie, high carb, and they're really good because you can just store them in the back of your pocket, your cycling jersey, and they keep well and they mm-hmm. taste good and they're really consistent and they just give that high sugar whack that you need when you're out, you know, using your body or if you want if i'm even if i'm doing like a talk like a, i do a lot of live talks so i like to do not much exercise the days before the talk I like to sit around just conserve my energy and eat lots and lots of sugar so then when it comes to give my talk i can just give high energy talk with no caffeine for you know two three four five six hours and just hit it and answer everybody's questions and it normally goes to like you know 12 and 12 at night or sometimes 1 a.m because people just keep asking questions and I like to be there and help them. And that's why I eat lots of carbs so I can just keep cracking out the questions and answers. 